Welcome back everyone, Pal Ponder on Weather here. Hope everyone out there is enjoying your weekend. This next storm system looks to come in bigger than expected because it is slowing down, tapping into some much colder temperatures and increased instability. So let's start off and show you what we're talking about of this developing trough up here in the Pacific Northwest. That is bringing some much cooler conditions for the West Coast. That is the same storm system that'll be diving across through the Rockies come Tuesday time frame. But there's the jet stream really dipping going into Tuesday afternoon. And as it dips, it's going to develop a low, a low pressure center to the northwest side of here. And that's going to bring some heavier snows really breaking out into the south of there. Also increased instability and some elevated rains and even some flooding rains could unfold in portions of East Texas heading into parts of Oklahoma and Arkansas going into the day on Tuesday into your Wednesday time frame. So if you do like detailed weather breakdowns on North America and are new to the channel, uh, hit the subscribe button and you're in. You get all my daily content on this channel. It's also important to hit the like button as well. It definitely helps out more than you know. But I'm going to be doing a giveaway on this channel coming up tomorrow of these one of those uh, Tempest Weatherflow weather stations. It's one I've actually purchasedly had myself for the last three years, and it is a five-in-one system. I love it because it is all solar. It's kind of a set it and forget it. Uh, but I'm going to be doing a giveaway on tomorrow's video. I'll be announcing a keyword and doing a random drawing and announce the winner on Tuesdays. All giveaways will be contact you through ponderonweather at gmail.com. So if anybody else contacts you in any other form, that is definitely not me. So if you'd like to purchase one of these uh, weather stations at a discount, they just put out a new code for Valentine's special. It gives you $40 off. And I did try the code. It definitely works. Knocks down $40 and free shipping. So here's the link. And I'll have this on the descriptions below. So if you'd like to purchase one, at a discount but i also started a second channel as well this one's pal ponder ultra and i've done a couple of videos on this channel this one's designed for more short range weather analysis but also more educational content i can be found at, at pound uh, pal ponder ultra and then i'll also have the link below so it's easy to find you can subscribe as well so let's really dive into the details and look at the setup for today so we got that we've got that trough digging in off the west coast that's bringing some rain showers up there into portions of washington but for the midsection of the country this is a kind of a, a mini mini cool front out ahead of these warmer conditions further south because this dry line is really setting up so we do have some snow showers into portions of minnesota into wisconsin that we're gonna have to be dealing with uh this afternoon but all the culprit is is this trough that's going to be digging in so by the time we head into your monday time frame that's going to bring some snows into the higher elevations up there into washington uh, uh, montana through uh, wyoming all the way through portions of colorado here digging into even portions of new mexico you can see where this cool front is but out ahead of it there's the dry line and the warm front that's going to be really elevating these temperatures all these areas are going to be probably easily into portions of the 70s down here in the portions of texas and into oklahoma that's going to add increased instability to these areas so as this trough really starts to dig in with this cold front this is by tuesday morning i think that's when the rains start to move in you can actually see the beginning stages of this low pressure center starting to dig down here into portions of new mexico into the texas panhandle this is by tuesday morning i think it just gets more intense as we get into your uh, tuesday afternoon as it taps into that those warmer temperatures and higher dew points further to the south so let's take a look at some of those dew points and this is always an indication whenever you see a dew point of 55 or higher that just gives you an indication of some increased instability and moisture in that atmosphere so as this trough really digs in it's got this instability to tap into and so further south you can see much into the 60s down there and towards uh houston into the victoria area down here in portions of uh, baton rouge and new orleans but there's kind of your cold front going to be into your tuesday afternoon like i mentioned on the northwest side of there 
that's where we're going to have a pretty good snowstorm start to break out. So, but yeah, at ahead of it, one of the things we also look at is your precipital water, the amount of water content that is really basically in the atmosphere. So at that time frame, as that trough digs in, these rain amounts could approach the atmosphere is hinting at one and a half inches per hour rainfall rates. That's high enough to maybe introduce even some isolated areas of flash flooding could be uh, unfolding as we get deeper to the day on Tuesday afternoon. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center has already highlighted a marginal risk for severe storms, highlighting those elevated dew points. But very heavy rainfall looks to set up across portions of Houston down here into Victoria, through portions of Central Texas into North Texas, but especially into East Texas, where they do have a slight risk for excessive rainfall right here up into the Arklatex region, these areas could pick up easily maybe two to four inches. This is the best indications where maybe a flood watch could be likely introduced as we get closer to this event. But every all these areas into these green shaded areas, that's where you could be seeing one to three inches of rain as this system definitely has slowed down compared to what it looked like yesterday. And with that, with the slowing down, it definitely has increased the rain amounts but it's also increased the snow amount. So if we take a look at the European, and this is the latest GFS, and we're the 850 low pressure center, and this they're starting to come together. Now that that system is starting to come on shore off the west coast, it really dives down through the Rockies and really starts to take shape across portions of New Mexico into the Texas Panhandle, but then really starts to intensify, getting a deep bona fide low pressure center forming down here into portions of Oklahoma through Kansas, that's where I think a good heavier snow swath looks to unfold. So further to the south, we've got the heavy rain, right? We got all the heavy rain tapping into some of those, you know, warmer dew points down there. And but there's the low pressure as we get into your Wednesday time frame. It comes out of New Mexico, it comes out of Texas, and really starts to deepen as we head into your Wednesday afternoon across portions of Kansas. But further south, it's all about the heavier rain. So here's the rains between now and I think Wednesday afternoon as it taps into this system. So these areas right here are easily two to four inches. It's definitely not out of the question. That's where we're looking at to possibly some isolated, uh, some pockets of flood watches could unfold. So definitely be on high alert going to be kind of a nasty rainy day for a good chunk of uh, central Texas and north Texas, but especially into east Texas as we get into your Tuesday and Wednesday uh, time frame. It looks to be a high coverage event, eastern Oklahoma through Arkansas, portions of Missouri here, and these areas right here into western Tennessee and into Kentucky here. And further south, we're going to have a more instability that some of those could have some severe weather associated with it as well. But here's your snow swath. This is definitely higher than what it was yesterday as all indications look to come together. And the GFS is kind of implying the same thing as this bona fide low pressure will be really diving further south and bring it, you know, bringing in some of that colder temperatures. And as it slows and more cold air mixes in, that's where heavier snows are going to be flying. So a good swath of two to four inches, definitely not out of the question in the Texas panhandle. But as you head up further north through western Oklahoma, good five to six inches, you start getting into Kansas area. Yeah, all these areas are going to be looking at possibly six to ten inches of snow. But especially as you head into eastern Nebraska here through portions, northwest portions of Iowa and swinging across southern portions of Minnesota and Wisconsin here, some of these areas could easily pick up a foot of snow. So definitely a lot of areas looks to overachieve compared to what this system looked like just maybe two days ago. It didn't really look like hardly anything, but when you got a combination of slowing down, it's gonna be tapping into some of those colder temperatures, all indications that this looks to come together. Cause so the GFS is highlighting the same thing. So that we're starting to see both global guidances starting to come together. We could have a pretty good bona fide snowstorm on our hand, setting up shop across portions of uh, New Mexico through the Texas Panhandle and swinging all the way through portions of Wisconsin there, heading up into Canada. 
that will be into your more or less you know tuesday night through wednesday through thursday time frame but beyond that let's take a look at the 850 millibar uh, temperatures as well so these are the temperatures about 5,000 feet that gives you an indication of some of that colder air will be dragged down further to the surface as well so as that low pressure moves out we do have a sneaking in cold shot that's going to be sneaking in to portions of texas and into oklahoma and across the southern plains starting on friday but really maximizing going into your saturday time frame with a chillier mass coming in it's not arctic in nature but definitely well below average for this uh, time of year if we take a look at the temperatures possibly on saturday afternoon yeah that's middle 40s guys that's not a misprint that would be 10 over 10 to 15 degrees below average with that system diving in across a good part of texas and the southern plains here these are high temperatures all the way down into the deep south right so you know that's not normal with highs 46 degrees 40 43 degrees look where the cold air is these are highs right so we're going to have another low pressure center really start to form and these are high temperatures and missouri well into the 20s here through portions of illinois here and that is an indication we could be looking at a secondary snow swath start to develop with another low pressure center digging in further south so this one really starts to dig in as well so while you have much cooler conditions further to the south it's cold enough to snow up here across portions of missouri and central missouri could really start to overperform with this setup and could be having a bullseye here and possibly six to 10 inches of snow. And that will just be on the day going into Friday night, heading into your Saturday morning time frame as this looks to swing across portions of central uh, Illinois. But as we continue to expand and head up into the Northeast, uh, we look at that snow swath starting to take shape across portions of upstate New York getting into uh, uh, Vermont and New Hampshire and heading up into Maine where they've seen plenty of snow <laughs> this year. Further south, I know you haven't, uh, but you know there are signs that the, on, on the extended horizon that maybe things might change as far as putting more Arctic air back in the picture. So if we take a look at some of the extended guidance, let's look at Europe. Because we always look at Europe first to see what's possibly coming for Canada and the United States. So for the next seven days, Europe turns plenty cold. And that's a, that's a good indication. Next week, they turn well below average from the 6th through the 13th of the month. So typically when Europe gets cold, the United States is next to follow. So if we take a look at some of the teleconnections, some of the longer range teleconnections, this is what we're seeing here, the, the, uh, the overall uh, European ensemble guidance of the EPS. This is your East Pacific Oscillation. Notice where the Arctic air is. It's well up into Arctic right now. That's where we have the positive uh, EPO, right? We're not dealing with Arctic air at the moment, right? So what's coming this week is not technically Arctic air, but it's definitely still cold enough to snow. But as we get towards past Valentine's Day, right? So as we head towards past Valentine's Day, I know these dates are kind of small to see, but it trends further negative once we get past, say, the second half of February. So the EPO starts to trend negative and it definitely, definitely does go negative by the time we say get into the 15th of the month. So that's an indication where some of that cold air will start being released back up from the Arctic through Canada again and eventually head into uh, the U.S. as we get deeper into the second half of February. So if we take a look at looking at a step further, we look at the GFS extended guidance as well. That also is a, a downward trend once we get into the second half of the month. And this one's able to see it a little bit further out. And it actually has the, the cold coming back essentially after in the second half of the month, ideally really after the 20th of February. This is what I'm looking at mainly after the 20th of February. But once we get that, get locked and loaded with the uh, negative uh, EPO, that's the trend is your friend by then as more colder air will be released into Canada, into the, into the United States. And that looks maybe to continue through the first part of March as well, it, as it looks to continue to be 
well below into the negative category. So if we look at some of the extended guidance going forward, past the 20th of the month, this is what we're looking at. Once that cold air heads into Europe next week, then that will be released up there into portions of North America, getting through Canada and going through in the United States. So this is the setup from say the 20, 22nd through the 27th timeframe of February, as we get deeper into the second half of the month, we start to see indications of more Arctic air, you know, entering the picture again, Alaska's cold, Canada's cold, and much of the lower 48 is well below average as well. So I do feel the cold air will be coming back as far as Arctic in nature, but it won't be until the second half of February, but ideally, after the 20th of the month so i appreciate you guys following and let's look at the rain so let's look at the rain the rain setup i showed you where the snow is but here's the rain prospect so we got that system that's diving in off the west coast it's going to bring spokes of energy off west so they could be looking at some increased rain showers and added the adding to those totals into the western regions up there into washington and oregon through california Notice much of the Rockies here, we do have that storm system, but it's not really until it's able to tap into the, some of those Gulf, or, Gulf of Mexico warmer temperatures that it's able to increase the instability. So this is the area of concern where we could be looking at some isolated flooding, you know, especially on your Tuesday, Wednesday afternoon time frame. And then that, snow, that swath will be further south, getting to, you know, some instability across portions of Florida, the Panhandle, and through, uh, through the East Coast. But once it heads up into the East Coast, we've got lighter uh, rain amounts. But once we head further north, I showed you the snow swath, and most of this will be in the form of snow. So I appreciate you guys uh, following. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update while I protect you for and